Hey there, I'm Drew and you are listening to or watching The Anxious Truth. The Anxious Truth is the podcast that covers all things anxiety, anxiety disorders, and anxiety recovery. So if you're struggling with things like panic attacks or agoraphobia or health anxiety, then this is the place for you and I'm happy that you're here. This week on the podcast, we're going to address a bit of a serious topic. And that is the idea that there may be a bit of a conflict between resolving trauma and recovering from an anxiety disorder. So let's get into that now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is podcast episode number 252 recorded in early April of 2023. I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of The Anxious Truth. And if this is the first time here at the podcast or the YouTube channel, welcome. I hope you find the content useful or helpful in some way. If you are a returning viewer or listener, welcome back. I'm glad you're here as always. So this week, we're going to talk about the idea that there may actually be a bit of a conflict between some of the principles of trauma recovery, and some of the principles of recovery from an anxiety disorder. This is not to say that one precludes the other, or that they cannot work together. But these are just observations that I have made over many years of talking with a very large audience of people with a lot of varied experiences. And they kind of crystallized for me over the past couple of months, and I wanted to share them with you in this week's podcast episode. Before we do just a quick reminder, that there are more episodes than just this one in the anxious truth, there's 250 something other episodes that came before it, all of which are free. And there are books that I've written about anxiety and anxiety recovery, that are helping many, many people around the world. Uh, I have courses and workshops and all kinds of good information. All of that stuff is on my website at theanxioustruth.com. So take a few moments, head on over to the website and avail yourself of all the resources, including the podcast episodes, the books, the workshops, the free social media content, it's all there, take advantage of it. And while you're there, if you are enjoying my work, and it's helping you in some way, and you'd like to find a way to support it, you can do that at the anxious truth.com slash support. And financial support is never required, but always appreciated. And any way that you do choose to support this podcast and the work that I do, whether it's just listening to an episode or liking a YouTube video, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. It means the world to me. So when I say that there may be a bit of a conflict between trauma recovery and anxiety disorder recovery, what I mean is that especially for people who have been subjected to the kind of abuse or ne neglect, or belittlement or invalidation, that involves being silenced, and being unseen or pushed to the side or invalidated, or told that you don't matter, or had your voice taken away. If you've gone through that sort of thing, it matters because your experiences matter, they inform the way you see the world. They provide a lens that you look through in terms of how you see the world and how you see your life, and how you interact with the world and how you interact with people around you. So we carry those experiences with us. And that's just a common part of the human condition, our experiences come with us in life. So if you've lived that kind of experience, number one, my heart goes out to you. And I'm really sorry that you've had to deal with that. And if we were to call that trauma, and really, why wouldn't we? Then if we talk about healing that sort of trauma and healing those wounds, resolving that pain, then we're often going to work on allowing ourselves to be heard. You're going to learn to stand up, you're going to learn to use your voice, you're going to learn to speak up, you're going to learn to sort of we've heard phrases like step into your power and use your voice and, you know, just make yourself be known and get your thoughts and your words and your opinions and your feelings validated where they have been belittled or dismissed or made to seem like they didn't matter for so long. And that kind of matters. And I could see where that kind of work is important. And it can be really helpful if you're trying to overcome that sort of traumatic past, where you have been muscled into a corner or just left in a corner by yourself, and sort of been made to believe that you don't matter and you don't have a voice. So learning to cultivate that voice and learning to express the thoughts that you have the emotions that you have to validate those to honor those, it's going to be a big part of that. And we see that in very common social media, sort of narratives that revolve around trauma resolution, that are based on messages like step into your power, find your voice, be seen, be heard, be validated, risk being too much, like sometimes I talk about that in social media circles, sometimes in mental health being too much becomes a personal brand. But I understand why are some of that might come from and you've heard things like if I'm too much for you, then go find less and people stand up and cheer for that sort of thing. And I, and I get why I do understand why that is. Because if you've been invalidated or made to feel invisible, 
or insignificant or unimportant, or like you don't matter, then the ability to stand up and say, I'm here, and I'm going to get in your face, and I'm going to say what I feel, and I'm going to say what I think, I'm going to say what's going on in me, I'm going to make an impact on the world, that could be hugely powerful. And that could be a big part of the healing process. So I, I kind of get that. And I understand where that comes from. So if you're going to try to heal, if you will, or overcome those negative experiences that you have had in your past. And part of that is sort of understanding that you do have power, you do have a voice, the things you think and feel, and your opinions matter, and they can be expressed, and they can be honored, and they can be acted upon. If you're going to go down that road, then you're going to do things like stepping into your power and using your voice, and learning that you are in fact enough and that you're amazing and you're beautiful and you are worthy and everything that goes on inside your head and your heart matters and the world needs it. So if you're going to go down that road because you need to, I would completely understand why and I would completely support that. But you are kind of learning to pay attention to everything you think or feel and then honor that, shine a light on it, right? Put it out in the world. If you were never allowed to talk about what you felt or what you thought or what was going on with you, and now you're learning that, oh, I can do that, like the world does want to hear what I have to say, then we could create a little bit of a conflict because if you're also dealing with an anxiety disorder and you start to become afraid of your own body or your own mind in certain instances, you wind up in a state of disordered anxiety where your body and your mind are doing what they're designed to do, but at the, at the wrong time, and you've learned to be afraid of that, and your mind is creating thoughts that you don't want, and they disturb you, and your body is creating symptoms and sensations that you don't want, and they disturb you. And that can, that can create a really hard situation, because not, not only do you have this past experience that you're trying to overcome, but now you have this new experience where you've learned to be afraid of yourself, and your life becomes very restricted and small, and everything is a trigger, and everything's scary, and you start to believe things like I'm about to go crazy, or I'm about to have a heart attack, or I'm dying, or I can't breathe. We all know these things. If you listen to the podcast, you get it. So if you're dealing with that type of problem, enter me, or somebody that sounds like me with this type of theoretical orientation, a sort of a cognitive behavioral approach to anxiety disorders. And when you hear me talk about these things, you will often hear me talk about thoughts being just thoughts. We talk about detaching from thoughts and not treating them as if they're automatically critical and important. We talk about not listening to your body and not honoring every thought and feeling that you have. And in many instances, my job is to dismiss your fear and your worry because it's essentially irrational. So when you want to express fear towards somebody like me, one of the things that we kind of can do for you is to sort of confidently shrug our shoulders back at you and say, it's okay, we can dismiss that because you're really okay. There's nothing wrong right now. So in that situation, you see what starts to happen here, we start to say, your thoughts and your emotions and your body feel incredibly important to you, like they are the most important thing all the time. And you start to get dragged around by that. But somebody like me will start to tell you, but just because it feels like they're important doesn't mean that they are. And you see what's happening here. So on one hand, you are trying to get to a place where you can feel things and think things and feel that things are important. And you can show them because you were never allowed to do that. You can express that you can say what's on your mind, you could say what you're thinking, you could say what you're feeling, you can take a risk to go out and make your voice heard to stand up and be seen. And learning to do that is a big deal for you, which I understand. And I'm cheering for you while you do that. And then you get somebody like me who rolls in and says, Yeah, but when that turns into an anxiety disorder, and you are terrified of your body and you're terrified of your thoughts, not terrified of the consequences of speaking up, but the content of the thoughts themselves. And you have somebody like me that says, Hey, wait a minute, not everything you think is is of the utmost importance, not everything matters, not everything has to be honored or validated. It's okay to like disengage from your thoughts, it's okay to, to disengage from your emotions. It can start to sound like I'm invalidating what you think and feel, which is exactly the opposite of what you're trying to learn to overcome those past traumatic, neglectful, abuseful, ab abusive experiences. And I could see where things would start to get really confusing for some people. So if you are struggling, because you have lived those kind of experiences, and again, my heart goes out to you if you have, I can see 
where you might be drawn to two messages that sort of become diametrically opposed to each other. So if you have lived the type of experience where the, the messaging about standing up, speaking up, being seen, expressing yourself, not holding it in and not hiding resonates with you because you were punished for doing that or never allowed to do that. And you want desperately to do that because you want to be seen and want to be heard and want to be validated and you want to be seen as worthy. Then on the flip side, you're also drawn to a message like mine that says, thinking is just thinking, thoughts are just thoughts. You can throw them away. You can walk away from them. You don't have to engage with them. It could be really confusing. And so I'm starting to see a subgroup of people in this community. And, and if this doesn't resonate with you at all, well, this is a podcast episode that you can kind of eject from, I guess, and I'll see you next week. But if this does sound like you, I'm starting to see a fairly large number of people in this community that are struggling with that. And when they try to implement the principles of recovery from an anxiety disorder, they are now silencing a voice that they are also at the same time trying very hard to cultivate support and strengthen. So in some parts of life, you are learning to have a bigger voice and say what you feel when you feel it because it's okay to do that. And on the other side, you're learning to not always say what you feel because that can sometimes steer you wrong and get you sort of dragged around by this disordered state of anxiety that tends to kind of ruin your life. So you can see that what we wind up with in that case is a situation where you have two messages that don't match. One is validate yourself, stand up and be heard, your thoughts and feelings matter. And on the other side, the message is your thoughts and feelings aren't always important. You can drop them on the floor. You do not have to always listen to your mind and body. And that can start to become a really confusing and almost mind blowing, mind blowing place. And when I see people struggle with that sort of conflict from one message to the other, I have to admit that it sort of blew my mind for a second. And I try to be mindful. And I know other people that sound like me, we try to be mindful of the idea that we're never invalidating you, we're trying to invalidate irrational fear to get you past it. But depending on what your past experiences are, and what you bring to this process, that can create a real confusing mess, where you're just not quite sure what you're supposed to do. Am I supposed to say what I feel? Am I not supposed to say what I feel? When is it okay to do that? When is it not okay to do that? And you could really wind up a little bit stuck and feeling overwhelmed, like, how am I supposed to do both of these things? I have these particular podcasters or social media celebrities or whatever, telling me to stand up and step into my power and be seen and say what's on my mind. And then I have this group of people over here that's telling me that I shouldn't always say what I feel. So if you're feeling confused by that, as one of the people giving you the you don't have to honor your thoughts and emotions message, let me tell you, I see you. And I understand that we might be confusing you. I'll just speak for myself. I might be confusing you to a certain extent. And I don't mean to do that. And I don't have any answers for you today. I do not have a, well, here's the method that you use to resolve these two methods and glue them together and knit them together. I, that exists. And I said in the beginning of the episode, this doesn't mean that, that your traumatic experience precludes anxiety recovery, nor does it mean that your anxiety recovery precludes trauma resolution. They can both be done. But it takes a little bit more nuance, it, it takes some more skill, it probably takes more guidance, like in person, real guidance, if you can get that. And I know not everybody can, and I'm sorry about that. But I just wanted to take a few minutes today to, to at least recognize that for some members of this community, I know you want nothing more than to get better and overcome your panic disorder, your agoraphobia, your health anxiety, your OCD, whatever it happens to be. But in the same vein, you may have lived some experiences that to heal from those, you have to follow a message that in some ways is opposite of what people like me or I am saying in this podcast or in my books or in my workshops or whatever it is that I'm producing. So if you find that they are at odds, it's okay to say, if you were so inclined in a public forum, this is confusing because you're telling me that my thoughts don't always matter. But if I stay silent, I feel trapped, or I feel like I'm repeating or reliving that traumatic past when I was not allowed to speak, when I was told to shut up, when I was put in a corner, when I was muscled away, when I was abused. It's okay sometimes to express that. Like when you tell me to do that, Drew, or someone who sounds like Drew, it makes me feel like I'm going backwards. 
into a place where I was told that I don't matter and what I think and feel is irrelevant. And we don't mean it that way. I don't mean it that way. We're addressing a very specific type of thought that's based on irrational fear and irrational belief. We're never trying to invalidate you as a person or everything you think or feel is irrelevant. That's not true. So again, I wish I could tell you that I have a solution for this, but I don't. What I have is at least an understanding that this is a real problem. It can be for many of you, and it can be really impactful. So if you're listening today and you feel like this is you, just understand that I kind of get that. And if I had some steps for you, I would give them to you. But what I would say is, at least I, speaking for myself, can try to be a bit more sensitive to that particular issue and understand when it might be coming across, my message might be coming across the wrong way. And I will try to clarify that a little bit. And I will try to make some space so that if you feel that this applies to you, you can speak up. So somewhere in my community, whether it's in the comment section, or you're an Instagram subscriber, or the Facebook group, or whatever, if you need to speak up about that, go ahead, because I want to hear it. And I suspect that anybody that sounds like me that's trying to help the way I do wants to hear it too. So that's all I have to say today on that. Is there a conflict between trauma recovery and recovery from an anxiety disorder? Maybe in this particular circumstance under this context, I see enough people every day to say that I think that might be a thing. And I think it just means for the helpers, we need to be a little bit more in tune with that. Maybe we need to coordinate a little better. The people helping with that and the people helping with this should probably talk a little more. I could try to make that happen in whatever limited influence I have. But we certainly can encourage you to, to speak up about your experience, to help us help you a little bit, to know that you're in a safe place where if you want to talk about that, you can. And uh, that's about it. Again, wish I had some better answers. I don't. But I do have an acknowledgement, hopefully some understanding and hopefully a little bit of kindness for you and knowing that this sometimes is harder than it is for other people. For people like you, it is harder than it is for the rest of the people. And I get that. So that is it. That is episode 252 of The Anxious Truth in the books, a little bit more subdued. And you know this one is over because there's the music that is, as always, Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake, who wrote that song, at least in part inspired of this podcast a few years ago, and he's been nice enough to let me use it. So if you want to check out Afterglow or know more about Ben Drake, the musician, and my friend, head on over to bendrakemusic.com. And of course, if you are listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple, some place that lets you rate or review the podcast, leave a five-star review and maybe take a minute to rate the podcast if you really dig it because it helps more people find it and we want to help as many people as we possibly can. So thank you for that. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the, my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when, no videos come, new, when new videos come out. Leave a comment. I circle back a couple times a week and answer those. And thank you so much for your support and for coming by this week as always. I hope this has been, has been helpful and we'll explore this topic a little more down the road. But until then, just do the best you can Keep trying to move forward, even when it's confusing and you're not sure. And if you need to speak up, speak up. Because at least speaking for myself, I promise I will listen. I will be back next week with another podcast episode. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about, but I will be here. And remember, I would tell you that this is the way, but that's even more confusing for some of you than it is for others. So I'll just say, hang in there, keep going. I'm cheering for you, and I will see you next week. Take care. You get another chance to go and live your life. Pressure like an atom bomb You keep on dancing like it's your last song